Hi, welcome to You and Your Health. I'm your host, Dr. David Bertone. Today's show is about an exciting uh, uh, topic. It's called regenerative orthopedic medicine. And these are things that are, uh, have been in the news lately, uh, things like um, platelet-rich plasma or blood spinning. There's also stem cell grafts that are used and prolotherapy. These are exciting cutting edge techniques that are being used on uh, common injuries like uh, chronic tendonitis and arthritis and chronic pain syndromes. And we have an expert here today to talk about this exciting uh, process. With us today is Dr. Edward Magazina. Dr. Magazina is board certified in physical medicine and pain management. He's also the CEO of the New Jersey Interventional Pain Society and the assistant professor at New York Medical College and a clinical professor at Robert Wood Johnson. Thank you, Dr. Magazina, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing, Dave? Good, Good thanks for here. joining us. Thank you. And I also want to say that you were a former physical therapist like myself. I was, I did that back in the, uh, in the 70s. Excellent. Yeah. So give us a little background about uh, what you're doing now and how did you get involved in this uh, type of medicine? Well, I, I would say I, I started at St. Peter's Hospital. Uh, I was there for three years okay. and I uh, was treating people with cortisone injections and things like that. Uh, doing the standard techniques, and uh, I, I was not getting the results I wanted. Uh, after a while, the cortisone just stopped working, and people need to come back, you know, more more frequently. And I, I said, "There's got to be a better way." And I remember actually reading in a physical therapy journal about a technique called prolotherapy. And I said, "Well, let me let me go back and find out what that's all about." And it was a regenerative technique, and I, I learned that back in 1994. Uh, I took a course in that, and I did that for approximately, and I still do it, for approximately uh, eight years until I started adding the, the new techniques to my practice. But uh, prolotherapy is a regenerative technique. It's been around, oh, probably about uh, 70 years. Uh, it started in the 30s, and, you know, you asked me about, you know, history before, <laughs> and uh, history of prolotherapy actually goes back to Hippocrates. Okay. Okay, you know, the father of uh, medicine there. and. Uh, he would treat javelin throwers uh, that had like injured shoulders, rotator cuff, or dislocated shoulders, and he would take hot needles and place them into the shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, these hot needles would cause uh, an inflammation or a tissue reaction that would somehow cause some scarring or some healing to occur in those shoulders and then they'd get back to their javelin throwing. Um, in the 80s, they were using uh, irritating uh, substances for healing hernias. Uh, in the 1880s, okay. and in the um, and about 1935, uh, they started uh, using uh, prolotherapy uh, solutions. Uh, so it really started then on, on orthopedic type problems, and it wasn't really till the 1950s, uh, Hackett and Hemwall, uh, really, and Angli are the fathers of, of, of this technique prolotherapy, and uh, it really took off. I would say um, in the 80s and 90s, and now. Uh, as we go around to different uh, society meetings and courses around the country, everyone wants to know about these new regenerative techniques, and prolotherapy is one of them. Um, want me to tell you how it works? Yeah, let's let's first. Sure. I mean, you, t you mentioned the word regenerative orthopedic medicine, sure. which is kind of. An, I mean, most people when they hear the term orthopedics, they think of an orthopedic surgeon. This term came about because you're trying to use the body's own healing properties to regenerate tissue. Is that correct? Exactly right. Okay. Uh, people don't really think about it much, but the body heals itself every single day. All right? If you break a bone, it heals. If you cut your skin, it heals. If you mm -hmm. burn yourself, it gets better. If you go for surgery and they make a big wound, you know, cardiac surgery, they put a few stitches in there. Stitches aren't what holds you together. Your, your body heals, heals the wound. Mm -hmm. And what happens is uh, the inflammation that occurs from that injury causes a signal flare to occur. Uh, similar to if you broke down in your car and you put the flares in the road. And those signal flares, that inflammation, causes the bloodstream to release the growth factors, the platelets, and the stem cells down to where that uh, signal is or the injury. And that's pretty much how prolotherapy worked. And nobody really understood uh, back in the you know, 50s and 60s you know, how it worked. They just knew that it worked. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until you know, we have more advanced scientific methods now that we actually know that uh, you can see the increased growth factors uh, that are in that area when you put in uh, medications like dextrose and things like that. So when you, if you have an injury, yeah. say if something is separated like a, like a tear, yes. 
normally people would think about that the surgeon has to bring those two parts together right. for them to heal. Is that what is what occurring with this process, and can you do it for things that are separated or torn? Depends how, how far the, the tear is okay. and how, how large of a tear. Certainly large tears need to be brought together uh, surgically. Uh, but uh, uh, smaller injuries and smaller tears uh, can be brought together naturally. I mean, many times, uh, you know, the body uh, injures itself and it heals without surgery, right? They didn't have surgery back in the, uh, you know, 1700s mm -hmm. and the 1600s, right? Mm -hmm. People would still get better. Uh, even today, if you tear your Achilles tendon, that's uh, a common injury. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be that they would always sew them back together, and now they just put uh, you in a cast, you know, if it's not that bad of a tear, and it heals on its own. Because mm -hmm. uh, the body has a capacity to heal. But the message of healing may only last six to eight weeks. So if the body hasn't completely healed itself in that six to eight weeks, then the message of healing might be lost. And that's where prolotherapy comes in and these other regenerative techniques come in because it sets a, a biological signal back into that tissue so that the body uh, knows that that tissue needs to, uh, you know, to be healed. Excellent. Let's, let's talk specifically about some of the techniques and then we can go back and go through like a typical patient workup. Sure. Um, one of the things that's kind of in vogue and uh, people hear it in the news all the time because the athletes are getting this platelet-rich plasma therapy or yes. blood spinning. Can you just explain what that process is real quickly? A absolutely. There's, there's three phases to this uh, regenerative medicine and eventually we'll see a fourth phase. But prolotherapy was phase one. The platelet-rich plasma is phase two and stem cell grafts and things like that I, I call phase three. Uh, 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 platelet-rich plasma uh, is in your body, all right? It's the platelets. Uh, and the platelets carry uh, uh, growth factors in them. In fact, there's over 200 growth factors inside of the platelets. But there's five or six main growth factors, and these are the same growth factors that the body uses uh, to make a new baby, for example, all right? Uh, these things circulate in the, uh, in the bloodstream and uh, it tells the body what to do. So what we do is um, uh, take the uh, blood and we extract the platelets and inside of that, uh, that, um, that blood and the platelets like we a also matrix at a that matrix, point. right? Mm -hmm. We also have uh, approximately 170,000 uh, stem cells. So it's a combination of things. There's white blood cells, there's platelets, and there's some stem cells. And we'll take that, and that is the cream of the crop stuff that the body uses to heal uh, a ligament or a tendon injury or a muscle tear or something like that. So we take the stuff that the body uses to heal itself and we transplant it exactly where the injury is. And the way I do it is under ultrasound guidance or x-ray guidance, so we put it exactly you know, where the body needs so it. So do you inject it? Is it surgically implanted? Uh -huh. How is it done? It's usually? done what we call percutaneously, um, so it, it is injected. Uh, it's a relatively uh, painless uh, procedure, and I use image guidance, so we put it exactly where the known tear or problem is. Okay. Yeah. And you're taking the uh, the substance. You start with just a person's blood, and Correct. then you send it to a lab. No, we draw the blood uh, okay. in the office, uh, and there are, I'm not the only doctor in the country doing it. Although I was probably mm -hmm. one of the first, uh, you know, one or two doctors in the country to start doing this. Uh, but it can be done in the office. Uh, we have uh, special kits that are FDA approved. The whole procedure uh, you know, has been recognized by the FDA. And uh, we can uh, draw the blood, put it into the kit, and the kit through a centrifuge process extracts the uh, important layer of platelets and white blood cells that we use for the treatment. All right, so you do it that same day. You know, you're pulling the blood, spinning it, Correct. and putting it right back it's, into the it's spot. It's done right away, yes. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about some of the specific te techniques and which conditions you use it for. Sure. But let's move on now to the prolotherapy. You said that was kind of the first step in the yes. process. Yes. So explain what prolotherapy is. Okay, prolotherapy is the injection of irritating substances that creates an inflammation in that tissue that acts as a tissue marker, as I was saying, so that the body knows that it has to send down the platelets and, and other growth factors in that area to heal it. And uh, you can use prolotherapy anywhere that you have an injury, uh, whether it's arthritis, a tendon problem, a muscle problem, or a ligament problem, and, and force the body into a healing phase. Now one treatment might not be enough, all right, because it may only heal at 10 or 20 percent. But if you hit that area that's injured, 
two, three, four, five, or six times, you can actually uh, continue that healing process, which usually only lasts about six weeks. You can uh, make the body heal itself by uh, going through that healing process uh, over and over again by remarking that tissue with the irritating prolotherapy solutions. Be similar to what an orthopedist might do when he scrapes a bone and he's trying to get a tennis elbow to heal, or if, if he has a, a fracture that's not healing, he may go in there and scrape it. Scrape the microfracture surgery. They'll drill into the bone. Drill into the bone to get mm -hmm. cir circulation to go into the area. Mm -hmm. These these are techniques that uh, have been done in orthopedics for years, but no one really realized, uh, you know, how they worked. Now, what is the substance that you use? We use uh, different things like dextrose and glycerin, and very small, minute amounts of phenol. These are all substances that are used in the body uh, uh, in other areas of medicine. Uh, that we've adapted and use off-label for the use of uh, this technique. And, and when do you decide to use a dextrose versus phenol? Well, each glycerin. of the solutions uh, uh, have a different strength to them. Okay. So it depends how much of an inflammation that we need to get the body to kickstart itself to go into the healing so process. So one is better for tendon injuries, one is better for joint problems, is, yeah. that, is that how it works? So you would start at a lesser... We uh, start at the milder solutions. Which is and glucose, work, work I would with, assume? Right, and then okay. we work our way up from there depending on what the patient needs. And the, really the intent is just to irritate to get the body's system to fire. It's, it sounds uh, too simple to, to, to believe and to be true, but if I can just reflect, uh, and, I, and this is what I tell my patients, um, every day in medicine you've got plastic surgeons and dermatologists uh, making you look younger. Okay, they're using lasers, they're using dermabrasion, they're using chemical peels, they're using it on your face in different places. Mm -hmm. and, and you grow new skin and you grow new collagen and wow, you look great after those dermatology treatments. But let's think about it. what are they doing? They're blasting the face with sand, they're taking a hot laser and giving you a second degree burn, <laughs> all right? They're taking acid and throwing it on the face with, with the uh, chemical peels and underneath they're growing new skin and mm -hmm. new collagen works the same way as those techniques, but we can apply that for orthopedic uh, principles. That's, that's an excellent analogy. Thank you. Um, let's move on to the stem cell graft. So you said first there's prolotherapy, then there's the PRP, and then the stem cell grafts. Can right. you just explain what that is? Sure. Uh, stem cells is, is really what we're, we're trying to get, even with the platelet-rich plasma, okay? Because the PRP, platelet-rich plasma, has growth factors in it which attract stem cells to the region. So if you want to regenerate tissue, uh, you need to get stem cells down in that area uh, or you need to get the tissue that's there uh, to reproduce itself. So uh, if you can go to the next step and actually get the body's stem cells and then transplant those stem cells and tell those stem cells what to do, then you can repair an injury, you can help heal arthritic problems, you can you know, it's really infinite. I mean, if you look on the internet and put in stem cells and medicine, you'll get a thousand articles on there. They're using it for, for heart problems. They're using it for neurological diseases. There's a lot of research involved now with, with stem cells for healing all types of things. They're even growing new uh, organs and body parts with stem cells and putting scaffolds. And then they, scaffold is like a, like a plastic paper mache thing, only it's of a, a biological material and then they'll seed that, that with stem cells and they'll make a new urinary bladder or they'll make a new trachea or something like that. So we're using it for orthopedic purposes, Great. basically. Okay, wonderful. When we come back, we're gonna talk specifically about what conditions can benefit from these cutting edge techniques.